So let's continue our discussion on magnetic forces that act on currents inside a wire as a result of magnetic fields in which those wires are found. So let's suppose we have a semicircular wire as shown that carries an electric charge in the clockwise direction, so in this direction along our wire. Now let's assume the radius of this wire is given by uppercase R and the uniform magnetic field given by B naught in which our wire is found points into the board and that is depicted by the following X's. So these blue X's symbolize the direction of our uniform magnetic field. So our goal in this lecture will be to essentially calculate what the net magnetic force is that is acting on this entire region of semicircular wire as a result of a uniform magnetic field given by B0. Now because this wire is not straight but because it's curved we essentially have to divide the wire into very short regions given by the differential dl. So this quantity dl is an infinitely small quantity. So we essentially want to ask ourselves what exactly is the infinitely small force given by df that is acting on the following infinitely small region given by dl. So if we calculate what that force is and then we integrate over this entire region that will give us our net force. So before we go into that let's take this differential dl and let's try to represent that differential dl in terms of the angle d phi and the radius of our semicircle. So we essentially draw the following right triangle and we use our sine trigonometric function. So sine of this angle given by d phi, our infinitely small angle d phi, is equal to the opposite side divided by the radius. So sine of the angle d phi is equal to dl divided by r. Now recall the relationship between sine of the angle theta and the angle theta. When our angle theta is very, very small, sine of that angle theta is approximately equal to that angle theta. So that implies that sine of the infinitely small angle d phi is approximately equal to the angle d phi. And that implies because this is equal to this, d phi is equal to our dl divided by r. So we take this equation and we we represent this equation dl in terms of d phi and r. So we see that dl is equal to r the radius multiplied by this infinitely small angle given by d phi. So this relationship will become important in just a moment. So now we want to calculate what this infinitely small force is df that is acting over this infinitely small region given by dl. So the infinitely small force on our differential region dl is equal to the following equation which we spoke about in a previous lecture. So we said the force df on this infinitely small region dl is equal to the product of our constant magnetic field B0 multiplied by the electric current I that flows through our wire multiplied by our infinitely small region given by dl. Now because dl is equal to R multiplied by d phi, we can replace dl with R multiplied by d phi. So our infinitely small force df is equal to the following product of these four quantities. Now, let's notice the following important point about the symmetry of our semicircle. So notice if we examine this force and we choose our x-axis to lie along this direction and the y-axis to lie along this direction, we see that this force will actually has, have a y-component force as well as an x-component force.
So notice the force DF has X and Y components. However, by the symmetry of the semicircle, all the X components will cancel out. Therefore, we need to only concern ourselves with the Y component forces. So let's see exactly what that means by looking at the following diagram. So notice this semicircle is symmetrical. If we cut it in half, this region will be exactly the same as this region. So let's take this force and let's look at the force across. So these forces will each have an X component and a Y component force. So we essentially use the right hand rule and we see that the force at this region points this way, the force at this region points this way. Now these two forces we ha will have an X component, one will point in this direction, the other force will point in the opposite direction. So if we take the sum of these forces, they will cancel out. In fact, if we sum up all the forces acting along the X axis, that will give us zero as a result of this symmetry. However, the Y component forces point in the same direction, so that means they will not equal to zero. So, the net force acting on this entire region as a result of our constant magnetic field is equal to the sum of all the forces acting along our Y direction. And this is equal to the integral from angle of zero to angle of pi, which is equal to 180 degrees, df multiplied by sine of the angle phi. Now, df sine of the angle phi is simply our Y component force. So, once again, we're integrating from an angle of zero. We're assuming this is our angle zero, and this is our angle 180. So, zero to 180 because we want to use radians. So, now we know that DF is equal to the following product. So, we can replace DF with this entire product. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of B naught multiplied by R multiplied by I multiplied by D phi multiplied by sine of phi. Now these three quantities are all constants so we can bring them outside of our integral and we get the following result. Now, if we actually integrate, this becomes negative and sine phi becomes cosine phi. So we see that the net force acting on this entire region is equal to negative magnetic field multiplied by current multiplied by radius multiplied by sine of phi from 0 to pi. So if we evaluate the integral, we get the following result. Now, cosine pi is equal to negative 1, so this becomes a positive. And cosine of 0 is simply 1. So that gives us the net force acting on this entire region of semicircular wire that is found in the following constant magnetic field is equal to 2 multiplied by B naught, our constant magnetic field, multiplied by I, our electric current, multiplied by R, the radius of our semicircular region.